Thank you so much. Okay, uh, for, for a start, I would like to thank uh, Robin Sanatara, uh, one uh, our spiritual director, advisor, Aya Santini, also our advisor. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, Reverend uh, Ananda Jodi from Britain, he, he was the one who really kick-start the whole project. He's not well, so he can come from the name. Uh, and all the vulnerables from Mahavihara, Aurora, uh, Siri Dharma, uh, and from Bukunis, uh, Reverend Dhammananda from Thailand, Venerable uh, Huli Park from uh, Vietnam, and all the Reverends uh, uh, from Vietnam. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Actually, I cannot invite another, another, another Jyoti, just blocks it out. And they just invite, say, can we come? <laughs> the opening, no? So we were like two so over here, uh, looking for volunteers to ferry them from the other forward and all that. <clears throat> so, but then it's all done today. And let me just tell you how we got this started. Initially, we were all doing on an ad hoc basis, individual basis. <coughs> we were either looking for, for accommodation for individual bikuni coming from Myanmar or some other country and we're looking around which Buddhist society can accommodate them so sometimes with the monks around they say oh sorry we cannot so we have to go for one sometimes we even have to look for Reverend Sinkan Mahayana Tampo to Reverend Sinkan is here oh she's not here yeah she said she was coming ah. So sometimes even a Dharma brother, like brother one has to take one of the Myanmar Bikuni back to his house because at 4 a.m. is uh, to take her to the airport. So couldn't find a place, so he took her. So then these individual Bikunis have either to stay with friends or relatives when they're on the way back home from another country or calling a, a nuns who come and need a place to stay. So we were thinking, uh, or even we, uh, uh, sponsored nuns to go overseas for uh, attend conferences and all that. Then we thought maybe it's time we do it on a collective basis. So Reverend Anand Jodi sent us an email and said there's one nun who was a former Sunday school teacher and she lost her sight and she needed to come back for another state to come to KL to see the doctor, visit different hospitals because of a neural problem and also to get her also compensation, a lot of things, and she needed a place to stay. So that's how we thought we need to find a place for them to stay. So that's how we started this place. And that was only about a year ago. Uh, then Reverend Anand Jodi uh, helped us get start a blog by a Dharma brother from Singapore, whom we don't even know who he is. Oh yes, I forgot to mention Reverend Udeka too, is our spiritual advisor, she's now in Melbourne. We couldn't come. So through her contact, uh, one Dharma brother in Singapore helped us start the blog. And then, uh, through the whole year, we have various activities, like I went on a few Dharma uh, societies to give a uh, sharing of what we are doing, what we plan to do. And there were individual bikunis also visiting, like, uh, Aya Upeka, a Reverend, a, sorry, Aya Tahasapana. She was the nun who was ordained by a, a John Brown. Uh, so she, she's a Malaysian and she was coming back. So we hosted her. And then Bikuni Lodi uh, Chitatu, she was also uh, coming here. So we also hosted her and we took her to Ipo, uh, Taipei and Penang for a road show, road talk. Uh, so that's how, until today, we are opening a center. And uh, uh, Reverend Sanakara was kind enough to give us this premise because Kinara Mehta was moving out because the own premises. So in August, he told us we can use this place. <laughs> but we only started uh, renovating two weeks ago. <laughs> so everything like, very difficult uh, text. And the place had nothing, so we have to buy all the furniture and everything right down to the teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> so, with a committee member of uh, eight, there were only five of us who could work. 
because uh, one of them got her PhD in America. She came back only yesterday, I think two days ago. All the others were not aware of that. So the five of us, plus some volunteers, we managed to do you know, three things. <laughs> we were ambitious to also organize a workshop. Because the organized opening is already one thing. We do renovation, we buy the, all the furniture, tables and everything for the, this uh, place, the Kami. Then we have to organize workshop, the participants keep calling in and want to participate, some say cannot come. So it was like <laughs> 24 hours, we were ready this. But um, we are so, so happy that we survived it and all of, us, all of you are here uh, to share with us this beautiful uh, auspicious day. There were many who said they couldn't come. Aaron Sujato, uh, Ajahn Brown, all send their best wishes. Uh, Reverend A. So others also to make it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sadhu. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. You can come to the index for talking for our committee. So can the committee stand up? Yeah. I can't find them also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So, uh, so these few committees, Sister Sotien, she became a, a, a Dr. Lai Sotien. Appreciate it. 
and the police mahal bihar supported and the various other sangha members even they are, they are not present here today they spread the, their spirit of the support in the center as father mentioned on the you know the always is kind a couple of times we had a meeting as well and uh, <clears throat> and also since about our mention i given this property to run the go to be bihar <clears throat> that's mean i'm the property owner you know? <laughs> i've not bought any property this place is actually the great generosity of the one on the corner i think the hard work done by the impact and the donor want to take back after the immediately the Kinara using, you know, and the ex owners are around here. Kinara we call the society. They were used, I think, ten years, eleven years. Yeah, they used ten years. I really greatly appreciate for their generosity. That we didn't charge single cent until today, even not that late. Be is it? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Others we didn't pay anything. Big sadu to the donor who wants to own us as well. And also at the same time, the donor wants to take back after you immediately did not let that move out. But I thought, you know, want to creep myself as well from here, you know, to, without holding any, uh, what called the, some sort of, not legally ownership, some sort of uh, mutual understanding ownership holding in myself. I want to detach from there. Then finally, I think they want to take back uh, the groundwork done by the, I think Doris Gang. Uh, is he around here? No. Okay. See the one communicate with the donor. I think she's that the, the people who are the donor. <coughs> See the one. It's an agency. And even though I think someone want to take back the property from the land to other things. But she able to convince I didn't do much talking to them, but see the I'm talking to the <coughs> all the owners agree it will be uh, maybe I hope not that maybe twenty years I think tax or the temporary friend of three I think they they might be given to us and then no time period they mentioned I hope I believe we won't only to be staying in for uh, twenty years I think strongly I believe it with your support, with your smile, with each and every one of your present over here, with each and every nuns and monk, they are great compassion, they are great loving kindness. Definitely within five years we can move to the another place to bear, we have to make the record. In another ten years we make sure we do within five years half of that. Can we do it? I think we can do it. I think number of people, if we can get the small place for the spiritual practices, definitely we can be able to do it, you know. And of course, the Kinara Metta be here today as another important part. For us, it's a compliment. The Kinara Metta consider this place a compliment for the Kinara Metta as well. They are able to rejoice this place to use another Buddhist center rather than using for other, other purposes, you know. That's where the today in our Meta Buddhist society, in Alanda Buddhist society, and uh, some of the other Buddhist society, but not know some of the members are here as well, so now some of the members are here, and where is various Buddhists, the people, eh? Satanam. Oh, Satanam is here supporting, okay? And all each and every one of you are here present today to fully support in your own heart and mind to the center to be spiritual practices, center to be the lay, the, not only the ladies at all, the men as well, to develop their spiritual development as well. The important directing the centers, the places for the religious purposes is one of the four greatest meritorious activities you are taking part. The another as I mentioned earlier, the Nagabi Center coming up into the, the same area is not the competition or it's not the, you know, the river, the, uh, the competitor in your own, the practices on previous places. It's a wonderful thing, beautiful things today 
we can share one another, understand the general offer, all those facilities, the new center for the nuns to use, as well as for the other, the whoever they require. That's the way this should be. We have to share our resources. It's an important part of the sharing in each and every one of you. Today is important part over here today. I it's called the Mirihar opening <coughs> for the uh, the visiting nuns and the uh, and the two remain in the place as well. We we strongly believe it. This is the uh, some sort of stepping stone for the the nuns to be uh there are the nuns to be in Malaysia to get you know the some sort of you know the base over here we are also coming to work to do it as well and especially over here we require the strong uh, working committee to proceed number of ladies today is waiting for the place such as you know like go to Vihara for the spiritual development but still we need some senior, some the members and the victims, supervision, guidance, and their spiritual health as well. Otherwise, we are not able to do it. The important part, the runs, the centers, that we require senior Sangha members, senior nuns, and the monks support supervision in this select the place to progress. We have worked together in order to success, we have to be closer. Diversity very easy, but the togetherness and closeness most important things to progress with the, the sasana. The understand the Buddha's teaching, nothing else only practices. What Buddha very clearly mentioned, practice bring us perfect. Practice make us realize. This day to day in life, on a very simple word, what Buddha mentioned, Sunata Dhare the Charata Dhamma. Listen, put into the mind, and practice your day to day practices, and implement this to every practical day to day life. It's a person make you perfect. Today, number of Buddhist centers, number of Buddhist uh, viharas, where is Buddhist Vihara today? A lot of people are coming. Various difficulties, various problems. A recent couple of days ago, there's one young gentleman, and there were so much problems. The problems we think he can't, he's not to say he's not educated, he's a well educated person. He can't cope up simple things in day to day spaces. He said had a wonderful two children and a wonderful wife, but he not able to cope. He had the people which children come up, come ask him, certain assistance from the temple and to the centers. We are required some of the guidance, some of the support, this particular group, but not only one. A number of people are in and out today, certain to the center. I, someone mentioned recently, someone of the psychologist, Dr. Mencher, the recent years, number of people asking for the what for the uh, medical assistance, or if they not take, this number of cases are coming up more increasing, and also the university, the psychiatry part of the uh, the area is a long queue. Those who are educated, those who are highly educated in overseas, cannot cope with simple thing. That's where the required your guidance, your assistance for those who are, the people are required that way. It's an important thing to developing each and every person mind is required. The developing mind doesn't come automatically, it doesn't bring, bring on the drop from the sky. We have to practice very hard in the end. It was an important part of that. Each and every one of us, every one of us control to play that in particular manner. Both may be hard opening. Today is going to be the it's a wonderful the golden the historical page today is going to take hold on this the opening of the Vihara and I really appreciate it the members of Mahasanga, the big friends, and also the lay the people coming forward to help us to rejoice each and every one of us 
nothing else, joy, joy of the another Buddhist center coming up. The center going to cater, center going to provide the facilities as well, you know, even though the visiting nuns and then some certain occasion we are do we are the Buddhist Mahami are holding and the other Buddhist centers, the centers are holding as well. And in any of the Buddhist centers they give the place as well for them to be uh, to remain. And it's probably believe even the Nalanda always holding the the you know, the, the Vikuni is over there. And the various other Buddhist centers as well. There's a beautiful, wonderful part of that. But still, if we can have it the center, the Vikuni itself, there's a difference as well. Even though we have other centers are providing, but if we can have it one particular center for the Theravada Vikunis to practice or other nuns to come as well, that's a wonderful great achievement. We require the high demand day and day by day coming to reach out to the lay women is much easier the nuns to be reached with them than the monks. And they are able to understand their nature, they are able to understand their problems, they are able to understand the motherly part of that and also sister sister part of that, what are the problems they are facing. Sometimes openly they can discuss their problems as well. It's a great wonderful contribution able to not able to do it. We can see it very clearly. Just now we shall one moment of with the other nuns in the inside the room I mentioned over there. The amount of good works the nuns are doing various parts of the places. We can see not only it was a lot of monks are doing good work as well, and a lot of monks not doing any work as well. A lot of nuns doing a lot of work, and a lot of other nuns are not doing work, any work as well. There's nothing really that any of that is a monks and nuns. The different individual character development as well. Individual person, how much they can take, how much thing they able to contribute, they do as well. You can't point anyone else, everybody doing certain part of that if they are body their own according to their own capability ability as well. Thank you very much. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thanks to all the people, the present here, the wonderful smile and the fake meta as well. Thank you. I, I thought I did my duty already when they asked me back again. But I'm very happy to uh, address the group, particularly with our brothers and our sisters, ordained brothers and sisters, and now a larger audience. Mm -hmm. I st my mother started her ordination in Mahayana tradition from Taiwan. That was the year 1971. For some, some reason, for some reason, somehow Mahayana does not go in Thailand. I realized that from my mother's work. For 30 years, she was alone, and there was no Sangha. There was no Sangha until my time. I was teaching for 30 years to realize that uh, I attended this conference in Howard. And that was the time when I turned my interest inward. I was there talking about Pikuni as somebody else out there. Never thought that I would get myself trapped into this auspicious tradition. <laughs> The year was 1983, and the question, there were many feminists, not Buddhists, many feminists, and it dawned on me. The topic of the conference was women, religion, and social changes. If you are the one who knows everything, but you are not making any move, you are not committed, there is no social changes. I felt ashamed of myself for being academic for being the one who has all the knowledge, but not making any move for society to change. That was the time when I was committed. First, as an activist, and later on, enough to become ordained. Ordination is life commitment. And I'm sure, Venerable, that it is not only this life commitment, it is previous life commitment also. Because when I was ordained, First time I look at myself, I was in Sri Lanka. First time I look at myself with shaven head, I should be surprised. How oh, this lady, she looked very strange. <laughs> but just the opposite. I thought, well, I know you before. You know, so the feeling was just the opposite. 
So I really felt that this coordination is committed through life and lives. And I'm sure in this audience, you are going to, through that passage, to be committed, to be even more committed than what you are doing now. To be lay person can also be very committed. To be lay people, you can also be very strong support to the monastics. Only few of us will be natural in your lifestyle as, a, as monastics. Not everyone. But I'm sure among you there will be some who are thinking about committing your life. This life, whatever years remaining, you have already spent your life. What about changing your lifestyle for as an offering to the Buddha? That's what I was thinking when I changed my lifestyle and my hairstyle. <laughs> I promise you that this hairstyle is very suitable. <laughs> very suitable for this, uh, for this modern life. You don't, you never, from now on, you will not have the bad hair day. <laughs> huh? Some of you have bad hair day and throughout the day you are so unhappy. I always have, always good day. Always good day. So, I am just promoting the monastic lifestyle as the other alternative that we will be very happy.
Thank you.